Today is the 3rd of March, 22, 3, 3, 22. And a lot has happened since we last talked two months ago. We explained the Pluto position, 28 degree Capricorn, that is where Pluto was last time in 1776 on the 4th of July. This is why I call this the reincarnation of America, the moment of the reincarnation by its astrological chart. So, on 22, 22, 22, the world substantially changed. That's exactly seven days ago. Pluto has reached now the point which was 27 degree, 33 arc minutes in Capricorn. And this was the moment where Russia started the activity related to Ukraine. This is now on the way, we're in the seventh day of this operation and the Russian Navy is about to go in an amphibious assault on Odessa. In the United States we have been discussing the midterm election and then these elections in 24. <coughs> it is possible these elections take place. The astrology can't tell it, but it's also possible they won't take place. And the reason is because continuity of government, COG, continuity of government, that is related directly to what we could call the extra dimensionals. And we'll talk about the extra dimensionals and about John de Souza. And I'll explain to you now the whole situation where we're at on the date 3-3-22. Saturn is in Aquarius today and Mercury is passing right through line of Saturn in Aquarius and true enough we see this entire worldwide censorship. Um, I have difficulties being able to follow Russian media now and so there is a censorship that has come down like a blanket, like an iron curtain on all of the communications out of Russia as well as you know on all the communications that we all have with each other. It's kind of strange, it's like no sooner have we um, left the whole Covidian cult, this Covid operation behind, which was a psychological operation that's still going on, we are now in a new situation that is adding up to the situation. To give you a quick summary of the situation report for the European Union and the world, I told you last time about these world trials that Doris Lessing described in her fictitious fiction collection Canopus in Argos, Shikasta, Syrian experiments, etc. We talked about this, the world trial, the people's trials. <coughs> so this trial has been held by Dr. Rainer Fulmich in um, Europe, together with you know, dozens and dozens of lawyers all over the world. Those were six sessions of about five hours each, so about 30 hours, I watched the whole thing. There were several um, witnesses that testified about the entire COVID operation, which includes a lot more than just bio-war. It includes the financial destruction, the planning by World Economic Forum. Basically the entire agendas that were cooking for the last, I would say roughly six, seven decades. We we're really looking way back to when the Nazis started their operation in Germany and then worldwide. So this brings us back now to the Russian president who stated three conditions, three goals. He said Russia wants Ukraine demilitarized, that's one, denazified, that's two, and he wants them to recognize Crimea as Russian. Oh, and of course, the Ukraine as being a neutral place in the future. They have to yet sign the surrender papers. This hasn't yet happened, they're still talking to each other. As a military guy, I told you I was uh, trained in war college and stuff. This is a very complex operation that the Russians have to lead because it's coming from about 180 degrees around the Ukraine. And if I could predict as a military person how this will wind up, <coughs> you will have about three segments of what is now the Ukraine. So you have Crimea, which is Russia. And you have the two republics, Donetsk and Lugansk, Donbass, which are independent. Then you will have about another third of the country, which will maybe be called Novorussia. 
and then you have the western side which will then be the Ukraine and two little republics Transcarpathia may be given to Poland and leave another little um, district kind of county would then go to Hungary. I think Hungary receives Transcarpathia and Poland would then receive the other small piece. The western chunk would then be Ukraine proper and NATO can have that or the European can swallow it. But the eastern part, almost half of the entire geography would be in Russian hands. That's kind of how when you look at the military encirclement the situation will go. So let's talk now about the aliens. We need to find new vocabulary from now on. So here is the Extra Dimensionals by John de Souza. John de Souza was a former ex-FBI special agent, more than 20 years experience. And he was really the point man. Anything to do with uh, weird sightings, alien operations, they would send in John de Souza from the FBI. So if there's anybody who has a slight clue of what we're discussing, he's the man. I had the um, privilege to meet Dr. Ed Mitchell the former NASA commander, he was possibly the other person who had quite a clue of what we were discussing. And in his book that came out in 2016 already, it's been discussed now more and more, it's called The Extra Dimensionals, he basically saying extra dimensionality is the key to understanding everything. By everything we mean all the areas in which we have been deceived to believe the physical world is the beginning and end of all things. But that's not the case. So, the extra dimensionals is about, generally speaking, the unknown aerial phenomena. It's a new word, it's UFOs, okay, unidentified flying objects. But it's also everything involved with it, which um, John A. Keel called the phenomenon. We've discussed John A. Keel together, remember? The Operation Trojan Horse, his famous classic book. So all this, what we're discussing, are extra-dimensional craft that are using the Earth's extra-dimensional field to travel. Most importantly, John de Souza posits, and I have spoken about it in my book, Light Seeds, the Earth is not primarily a planet, a three-dimensional position in space, in the universe, in cosmos. That's a secondary thing. The Earth is primarily a gateway, a portal. So the alien visitors, we could say, are extra-dimensionals, not so much extra-terrestrial. You see the difference there? Terrestrial is very limited, extra-dimensional is anything. Also, extra-dimensional can be right in this room, by the way. Extra-terrestrial is definitely from outside of this world. Understanding this creates a completely new picture of our reality because we have to understand the supernatural really relates to us constantly, actually defines what we're doing. We're just not aware that we're living constantly with the extra-dimensional or the supernatural. The extra-dimensional life from multiverses have always used us as a gateway, as a portal to transit into and out of our universe. So what I'm suggesting is this. We're missing the most important part of the whole puzzle because the interdimensional and the extra-dimensional are really nothing without our own inner dimensional. The inner dimensional, the dimensions are inside of us. That's why I call inner dimension. To function within all these dimensions, to travel within the dimensions, we have to have our own inner dimension. And that's kind of my secret. Once you're aware that you are with all of these things, dimensions we discussed, you know, you can replace dimensions with reality or timeline, I don't care what you call it. So once we are outside of these dimensions and realize we're in our own dimension, we're on the way of grasping how to handle it and what it is about. So I would like to 
get on to another subject which is important. In these really extremely unusual times we have now entered into, a few days ago, we need to always remember Norman Vincent Peale, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. He was a pastor who, to some degree you could say, had an important role in the, let's say, spiritual education of President Trump when he was a young guy. <coughs> the seven points you want to remember of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. The first is very simple, Express, expect the best and get it. Okay, expect the best and get it. Believe in yourself and in all you do. Develop your power to reach your goals. Break the worry habit and achieve a relaxed life. And you improve your personal and professional relationships and you assume control over your whole circumstances. And then the last point is be kind to yourself, right? Be kind to yourself. So history is playing out now in 2022 in an extremely hyper-fast speed. Every day almost we feel like ages are happening, whereas before during ages nothing was going on. All of a sudden now, end of February, early March 2022, the entire story has changed. I mean, the Russians basically turned the table on the entire world structure. And as a system of the systems is super fragile, you know, the banking system, the central banks, the technological system, everything is super fragile. All it takes somebody to do one small mistake and the entire show may crumble. So we need to get ready within those seven parameters I gave you by Norman Vincent Peale. You gotta be ready for the unexpected. We need to assume that during 2022, almost only unexpected moves are going to happen. I talked to you last time about the chess game and how the losing party that knows that it is losing may just take the whole board and throw it down the table. Speaking of the other books, I'd like you to know um, Dr. Joseph Farrell has written at least 50 books. He has a library of its own. And this is a book called The Cosmic War, Interplanetary Warfare, Modern Physics and Ancient Texts. If you're interested in all these things that we're discussing about planetary warfare, interplanetary warfare, the extra dimensionals, the aliens and so on, you would want to read really Dr. Farrell's entire work almost. He talks a lot about this entire conflict that has been going on for ever, really since before mankind exists. So again, the system of the systems is very fragile. Russia has done its first moves. NATO and the West are trying to react to it. They have transformed into what we could call finance war. And so we'll see how finance war and military activity will work. I don't want to predict to you how this will end, but I can say one thing. For Putin, this exercise is the opening move, okay? He's been waiting 20 years. He's Foreign Minister has tried essentially for a decade or more than a decade to talk to the Western world, particularly to the Europeans, and they got nowhere. They came in a point when they were forced to do what they felt they have to do, and now we'll see how this plays out. But I know that the Russian High Command, the Kremlin, is not really going to give up until they have sorted out the entire chessboard. Again, I believe Ukraine is their opening move. They waited 20 years and then another a special 8 years for the Ukraine. And now we know that there have been 8 or more biolabs put into the Ukraine. We have this confirmed, this is not a conspiracy. 8 biolabs like Wuhan sitting in the Ukraine that had to be taken out. So beginning to get a sense but what's actually really going on. So you keep in mind that was Kazaria in the old times, 700 years ago. They came in from Lithuania to push the remnants of the Mongolians out. Ukraine has always had a really colorful story and now the game is on. So, 
Again, in this astrology, I told you in April, Jupiter passes through Neptune. We will have a full awareness of what is actually going on in the world. A lot of it was hidden. I mean, I didn't know they have put biolabs in Ukraine, completely new to me. There's a lot of things that we had no clue early January when I told you we know so much now, we'll know so much more in two months, which has just happened, and then we'll know so much more yet in two more months. So I suggest I'll see you again in April when Jupiter passes through the line of Neptune, and then we'll see how this chess game has progressed. Be well, take care. Thank you, my friends.